Let me make a prediction. It is the most important thing in the next 25 years. So I don't care what you like or don't like. There's a company in Silicon Valley called OpenAI. It's incredible, incredible technology. GPT-3, where you can have a language model now where it can auto write a book and you will not know that it was not a human. The problem is then these products, I think that is the big existential risk with this entire part of computer science. That entire infrastructure can be made much, much better with AI, right? A robot that does laser guided precision surgery, characterizing tumors with 100% accuracy. So you always get 100% of the cancer out when you go and get surgeries done. All these things are possible now. And you know, what ChatGPT shows you is just the amazing value in allowing computers to assist you in doing work. It's like a you know, calculator replacing the abacus, replacing a pen and paper. What's important though is this Buffett quote. A um, friend of mine told me this yesterday, which I loved. He told this story about refrigeration and the story he tells is that the people and the person that invented refrigeration made some money. But most of the money was made by Coca-Cola who used refrigeration to build an empire. And I view these large language models as refrigeration. Will there be some money made in it? I think so. But the Coca-Cola has yet to be built. And those are the companies that are really gonna monetize it. And in order to monetize it well, here's a basic thing about machine learning that's worth knowing, which is if you take 1,000 of the same inputs and give it to Facebook and Microsoft and Google and Amazon, they'll all come up with the same machine learning model. But if you have one extra thing, one little ingredient, that all of those other companies don't have, your output can be markedly different. It's like giving two great chefs three ingredients, but you give the third chef one extra one. That person has the ability to do something very special. So right now we are in the world where everybody is crawling the open web. We're gonna move to a world where as everybody gets sophisticated enough, where when refrigeration is widely available, somebody's gonna say, you know what? This site, I'm not gonna allow anybody else to access. It's only me only for my models, and those models will become better. And so we have to let that play out a little bit. And so it's gonna be a little bit of a really interesting arms race. So the, the next wave of M&A, for example, could be companies like Google and Microsoft and Facebook looking at these companies saying, can they be viable inputs to my large language models or to my other machine learning and AI models? So you could see M&A activity that drives that differentiation before anything else. So lots of really, so then as a result for guys like us, early stage investors, we may want to invest in companies that have zero viable public market potential whatsoever, but is building a data repository that's so unique that we know that it will feed one of these bigger companies and their efforts in AI. And that could very well justify making an investment that we would otherwise not make today, knowing what we know. What will make all of these systems unique is what we call reinforcement learning and specifically human factor reinforcement learning in this case. So David, there's an engineer that's basically taking their own input or their own perspective. Now that could have been decided in a product meeting or whatever, but they're then injecting something that's transforming what the transformer would have spit out as the actual canonically roughly right answer. And that's okay. But I think that if this is just a point in time where we're so early in this industry, where we haven't figured out all of the rules around this stuff, but. I think if you disclose it, and I think that eventually, Jason mentioned this before, but there'll be three or four or five or 10 competing versions of all of these tools. And some of these filters will actually show what the political leanings are so that you may want to filter content out. That'll be your decision. I think all of these things will happen over time. So the problem is then these products will fall flat on their face. And the reason is that if you have an extremely brittle form of reinforcement learning, you will have a very substandard product relative to folks that are willing to not have those constraints. For example, a startup that doesn't have that brand equity to perish because they're a startup. I think that you'll see the emergence of these various models that are actually optimized for various ways of thinking or political leanings. And I think that people will learn to use them. I also think people will learn to stitch them together. And I think that's the better solution that will fix this problem. Because I do think there's a large poll, a non-trivial number of people on the left who don't want the right content and on the right who don't want the left content, meaning infused in the answers. And I think it'll make a lot of sense for corporations to just say, we service both markets. Google did not want to release this for years. And they, they sat on it because they knew all these issues are here. They only released it when Sam Altman, in his brilliance, 
got Microsoft to integrate this immediately and see it as a competitive advantage. Now they've both put out products that, let's face it, are not good. They're not ready for prime time. Don't you think a lot of this gets solved in a year and then two years from now? Like you said earlier, like it's accelerating at such a rapid pace. Is this sort of like, are we making a mountain out of a molehill, Sachs, that won't be around as an issue in a year from now? I think that is the big existential risk with this entire part of computer science, which is why I think it's actually a very bad business decision for corporations to view this as a canonical expression of a product. I think it's a very, very dumb idea to have one thing, because I do think what it does is exactly what you just said. It increases the risk that somebody comes out of the, you know, the third act of Rebirth and says, wait a minute, this is not what society wants. You have to stop. And that risk is better managed when you have filters, you have different versions. It's kind of like Coke, right? Coke causes cancer, diabetes, FYI. The best way that they managed that was to diversify their product portfolio so that they had Diet Coke, Coke Zero, all these other expressions that could give you cancer and diabetes in a more surreptitious way. I'm joking, but yeah. you know the point I'm trying to make. So this is a really big issue that has to get figured out. There is not a single human being on earth, if given the chance to found a very successful tech company, would do it in a non-profit way or in a commoditized way because the fact pattern is you right. can make trillions of dollars. Right. I think it's fair to say a couple of things that there was probably two and a half or three years of capital raised in the industry that's going to get really put under pressure. And the reason is that there is not a lot of time diversity in that money, meaning people got it and they put it into the ground right away. And one of the principles of having a more predictable return set of returns over time is that you leverage time, right? So if you had $100 and you wanted to have a diversified stream of returns, you're much better off spending a dollar a month for 100 months versus $10 a month for 10 months. So just that thing will cause a lot of impact and headwinds for a lot of the capital in 2021 and 2022. Then the other thing you have to keep in mind is that over many cycles where we've had high rates and low rates and medium rates, our industry typically returns $1.60 for every dollar it raises. And that's over many cycles. And so if you believe that we're going to revert to the mean, out of the trillion dollars we've raised, maybe we'll return $1.6 trillion. Now that sounds good, except the problem is that $1.6 trillion is marked at five and a half true. Let me make a prediction. All of the things that you guys said, I think are incredible consumer surplus business opportunities, which means that the ultimate winner is us. Incredibly, incredibly productive and more leveraged in how we spend our time, which will allow us to do all kinds of other interesting things with all the time that we save. That I think is almost now a certainty. The problem with consumer surplus businesses is oftentimes there is no money made in the funding of them. Mm. And really where the money is made isn't enabling it. So for example, so far, what I would say is there's very little money that has been made in AI. There's been an enormous amount of money that's been made by NVIDIA. And the reason is because they are the pick and shovel provider in the, into the industry. And so as, that's an example. AMD, I think, can also benefit. So the silicon players seem pretty obvious here. Maybe some of the cloud players, um, the problem is the cloud players are trapped inside of other big companies with many other business models.